Now before starting a pH calculation in earnest, we have to understand something about the concentration of hydronium and hydroxide in solution, or even in just normal water. Now here's the thing, if water actually collides with water, an exchange of atoms can actually take place according to collision theory, and what can happen is that one water molecule can lose a proton to another, so one can act as a Bronsted-Lowry acid and the other as a base, and form hydronium and hydroxide in solution. They would form equal concentrations of them, and so therefore they would kind of cancel out in terms of their reactivity, and we would have a neutral solution still. But water does break down into ions, and water does have hydronium and hydroxide in it. And because this is an equilibrium, the concentrations of these two at any one time uh, will vary accordingly to always give us a constant. So what is that constant? Well, in real, uh, in, in 25 degrees Celsius, uh, in real conditions, the concentration of hydronium or hydroxide in water is 1.00 times 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter. It's not a very high concentration, but it's actually quite significant. So, if we're going to write an expression for this reaction, remember we don't include liquids in the expression, so the K value just equals the concentration of hydronium times hydroxide over 1. Or we call it the KW. And that equals these two concentrations multiplied together to give us the equilibrium constant of 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So here's the thing. If I said to you, you know what? The concentration of hydronium in solution actually goes up to 10 to the negative 6. Remember, that's higher than 10 to the negative 7. What would the concentration of the hydroxide be in solution? Well, it would have to be 10 to the negative 8. 6 and 8 still equals the 14. But do you get it? The idea is, now we've got more hydronium than hydroxide, the solution is now an acid, because it has a greater concentration of the acidic molecule. They both still equal this equilibrium constant of 10 to the negative 14. So you can now be asked a myriad of questions, or at least this next one. So break that question down. Understand that you've got the hydroxide ion concentration and you're looking for hydronium. You've got this formula memorized now. The Kw equals the hydronium times the hydroxide concentration. So if you're solving for hydronium, you ought to take hydroxide divided into each side to get hydronium equals Kw over hydroxide, manipulation of that formula. Plug your numbers in, 1 times 10 negative 14 is the Kw, got to know that. There's your concentration of hydroxide there, and so your answer is 4.3 times 10 to the negative 9. Now, you're going to say, hey, chem guy, wait a minute, look, 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 I just saw something here. 10 to the negative 9 and 16 equals negative 15. Yeah, but 2.3 times 4.3 equals 10. 10 times 10 to the negative 15 is the same as 1 times 10 to the negative 14. It all works out. That's good. Now, oh, and because the concentration of the hydroxide is greater than the hydronium, this solution is a base. But the thing is, do you always have to kind of do these mental gymnastics to be able to figure out if a solution is an acid or a base? Now, Soren Sorensen comes up with a pH formula about 100 years ago, and now that is the standard by which we compare acidity. And here's how we do it. 